Get out. Your old lady smell is ruining my new house. Michaela shouted as she threw disinfectant on me during her housewarming party. Drenched and overwhelmed by the pungent smell, I felt something snap inside me, standing up silently. I flashed a terrifying smile at Michaela and said, Then I'll clean this up for you. After all, I built it. I went upstairs to Michaela's room to retrieve something. My name is Harmony, a 72-year-old retired confectioner. More precisely, I was a patissier who ran a cake shop until a leg injury forced me into retirement. Now, I help my son and his wife who have taken over the business and live a modest life. Harmony, you must be happy your son took over, people would say at the tea parties I occasionally attended. I brought cakes made by my son and his wife, earning praise from neighbors. Today, at the tea party, I was engrossed in conversations when a neighbor mentioned my son. I stared at my tea, lost in thought. A shop with many memories, isn't it? Someone remarked, prompting me to reminisce. Indeed, my life had been full of ups and downs. I opened my patisserie at 35 after a decade of training in France. Upon returning, my parents opposed the idea, saying a cake shop in the countryside wouldn't work. I defied them, saying, I'll do it my way, and opened my shop. It became popular in six months, becoming the talk of the town. My French trained skills were praised, attracting customers quickly. My once opposed parents came to respect and fully support me. Time to think of the next new creation, my husband Daniel said, supporting our cake shop while preparing for the next day. Summer is tough for sales. Maybe a cold dessert would be a hit. That's what we were discussing when we heard the bell at the shop door. I hurried to the counter. Welcome. I called out, only to see Michaela, my sister-in-law, who appeared two years older than me. She was always flamboyant, having moved from the city. She dressed to stand out, enjoying the attention. Today she wore an actress hat and sunglasses, not fitting for the countryside. Honestly, I disliked her. Her hurtful remarks and belittling of our cake shop were intolerable. Being a doctor at a university hospital, she flaunted her income and education, but only when my brother Kendrick wasn't around. I was deeply annoyed by her cowardice. Boring as ever. The decor is outdated and it's dusty. Do you even clean? Michaela said, worried her fancy clothes would get dirty. I couldn't hide my annoyance and responded curtly, did you come just to say that? I just stopped by on my way to my new house. Why else would I visit such a place, she replied, looking around carelessly and picking up a cookie, placing it roughly at the register. I can't see the shop lasting, but I'll contribute to the sale since you're Kendrick's sister. She bought a mere $7 cookie with that attitude, who could warmly welcome such a sister-in-law. If she were Kendrick's wife, I'd have her out of here immediately. As I wrapped the product, grappling with these complaints in my heart, Michaela continued her tirade. Poor Kendrick, having such a failure for a sister. He said he gave up on his own shop because of you. Her words struck my heart painfully. Kendrick had generously helped finance my shop's construction when I returned and found no support. Only Kendrick stood by me. Later, I discovered the money he used was his own saved-up capital for starting a business. If you hadn't interfered, Kendrick might have had his own shop by now. Really pishable. Then why don't you help him financially? Daniel appeared behind me and retorted sharply at Michaela, glaring at her. It's between Harmony and Kendrick, not for outsiders like us. Only Kendrick has the right to complain about Harmony. Do you even have the right to blame her? Daniel, undaunted by Michaela, confronted her. Michaela, seemingly annoyed by Daniel's audacity, furrowed her brows and removed her sunglasses with a puzzled look. Of course I have the right. That money was mine. You have no business interfering in this. The funds for Harmony's shop were from before Kendrick married you, right? If Kendrick has no complaints, why should you persistently blame Harmony? Harmony is my wife, which husband would remain silent while his wife is being maligned. Daniel shielded me from showing my tears to Michaela. I felt reassured by his presence and grateful to be his wife. Michaela, not amused by Daniel's words, roughly grabbed the wrapped cookies from the counter and left without another word. After she left, we put up the closed sign, and Daniel embraced me. You endured well, Harmony, he said softly. I can't do this anymore. I don't have the confidence to get along with someone like her. Even if she's Kendrick's wife, I can't bear being treated this way. Are you not going to tell Kendrick? Daniel asked gently. I can't. He's already looking after mom and dad. I can't trouble him just because I can't get along with her. Kendrick, working as a chef in a hotel, was also taking care of our parents. 
Despite the long commute he managed, he had saved to open his own shop and be closer to our parents. It was with this in mind that he was saving money. Money can be earned again. I want to see you succeed as a top patissier. This money is an investment in your future. You'll definitely become famous, Kendrick assured me, investing $2 million in my startup. I was deeply grateful to Kendrick, and when he married Michaela, I was overjoyed. But I never expected her to be like this. I was tormented daily about what to do. Tomorrow we're going to Kendrick's housewarming, right? Maybe you could mention it to him. If Kendrick talks to Michaela, maybe she'll stop. Daniel suggested. Reluctantly agreeing, I focus on closing up the shop. Lately, I couldn't bring myself to tell Kendrick about Michaela. Kendrick's happiness while he supported mom and dad was precious. Despite sacrificing his own dream of opening a shop, I couldn't burden him further with Michaela's issue. I simply couldn't. The next day, Daniel and I, with a short cake in hand, visited Kendrick's new home. Harmony and Daniel, long time no see. Glad you could make it, Kendrick welcomed us warmly at the doorstep. Michaela was out shopping and wasn't there. I felt relieved not seeing her. Noticing this, Kendrick looked at me worriedly. What's wrong? You look pale. Is it the new house smell? No way, just had a bit too much to drink with Danny last night. I forced a smile to reassure Kendrick and avoid any awkward conversation. I asked to see around the new house. Kendrick shared that apart from the tidy living room, their personal items were still in boxes. We agreed not to go upstairs as per his request. Soon, our parents arrived, and we enjoyed a rare family gathering. Then Daniel seized the opportunity to bring up yesterday's topic. Sorry to bring this up at a housewarming, but there's something about Michaela we need to discuss. Wait, Danny. I wasn't ready. I panicked. But Daniel looked at me earnestly, holding my hand. Harmony, I've seen how hard you've worked, thinking about the family, keeping your struggles to yourself. It seems unfair to Kendrick and the others. Struggles? Harmony, have you been having a hard time? Kendrick asked, his expression full of concern. Realizing I was hiding something, everyone looked worried. I regretted my foolish thought of just enduring it all. Actually, I've been harassed by Michaela for a long time, I confessed. Everyone was shocked, especially Kendrick. Knowing his wife was bullying his sister-in-law was understandably distressing. Unable to continue, Daniel explained the situation for me. A heavy silence followed, and I wondered if I should have kept quiet. That's when Kendrick, as if having made a decision, spoke to Mom. Mom, I've made up my mind. That's right, no need to hold back anymore. Daniel and I exchanged confused looks at the unexpected response. Just as we were about to ask more, we heard the front door open. I'm back, it's so hot outside. Is Kendrick not here? Michaela returned home at the worst possible time. The family's spirits dampened as if sensing the charged air of her untimely arrival. Kendrick excused himself and headed towards the entrance. Let's store the cake in the fridge for now. Daniel suggested, as Mom and I moved to do so, reaching for the fridge door, Michaela stormed into the living room. Hey, don't you touch our stuff, she shouted, startling Mom and me. I'll take care of the house. Just stay put. Fading a creepy pleasant smile, she snatched the cake from me. Her words seemed softened, but there was an underlying sharpness, especially as she roughly took the cake. Mom, witnessing this, was speechless and unable to react, shocked by such treatment in front of her. Feeling hurt, I urged Mom to join me on the living room sofa. Sitting next to Daniel, I tried to hold back my tears. Thank you all for coming to our housewarming today, Michaela said, her tone falsely sweet. If you have gifts, you can leave them here. I'll gladly accept them, Michaela said, taking over as if she were the host. Her greedy words irritated both Daniel and me. Our parents, watching her closely, reluctantly presented their gift to Michaela. Following suit, though not keen, I handed over my gift, which Michaela snatched. What a boring gift. Typical, Michaela muttered, just loud enough for me to hear. Shocked by her audacity to complain despite receiving the gift, I felt my patience turning into anger. Then Michaela took out a bottle of disinfectant from a supermarket bag. Well then, let's wrap this up, she said, splashing the disinfectant on me. Drenched and stunned, I was speechless as my family cried out in alarm. So, I guess it's the height of the party, Michaela said, turning toward me and splashing the disinfectant again. Completely soaked, I couldn't believe the sudden turn of events. My family gasped. Hey, Michaela, what are you doing? Mom shouted, raising her voice and standing in front of me to protect me. Everyone glared at Michaela. 
Michaela sneered and threw her final words at me. The smell of an old lady will dirty my new house. Get out. At that moment, something inside me snapped. Silently, I stood up with a frighteningly pleasant smile and said, So you hate filth that much? Well, let me clean it up for you. After all, I built this place. Seeing me smile, Michaela seemed terrified and stepped back. I snatched all the prisons from her, ignoring her complaints, and headed to the second floor. Conveniently, there was a nameplate with Michaela's name on it in front of the door, and I boldly walked inside. I picked up a cardboard box still packed and dropped it from the second floor to the first with a bang. Hey, what are you doing? Michaela tried to stop me as the boxes tumbled down one after another. With so many boxes rolling down, she couldn't come up and could only desperately scream in vain. As I dropped the last box, she yelled, Do you realize what you're doing? Michaela, showing her true colors in front of Kendrick, glared at me with a devilish face. Unconcerned, I went downstairs and asked Daniel with a smile, Can you hold back that noisy trash for me? We can't let the dirty germs out. The new house will get dirty with the smell of mold, right? Daniel must have been scared too. The words from my ever-smiling face were no longer treating Michaela as a human. I threw all her belongings outside with apparent delight. People might think I've lost my mind, and it can't be helped that they think so. Stop it, Kendrick. What are you just staring at? Stop her. Isn't your sister out of her mind? Michaela screamed desperately. However, Kendrick did not respond. Instead, he silently watched my next move. The entrance was overflowing with Michaela's cardboard boxes, a mess, but it couldn't be helped after throwing everything outside. I clapped my hands and walked towards Michaela for the final touch. Well, now it's just Michaela left. What do you mean? You think you can get away with this? She spat, her voice laced with venom. Who knows? I can't hear the threats of trash, I replied, my smile mechanical and eerie. Michaela gasped, looking at me fearfully. Without paying her any more attention, I instructed Daniel to kick her out along with her slippers. Hey, stop. No, Kendrick, help me. Michaela begged Kendrick for help, but he had no intention of listening to her. At this point, I understood what Kendrick and the others meant. There wasn't a single person on her side here. Get out if you understand. This is my house after all. What? What are you talking about? Before Michaela could finish, Daniel dragged her out, pushing her outside the entrance. He immediately closed the door, double-locked it, and even chained it. Michaela, now completely unable to enter, was left outside in the summer heat. She banged on the door and screamed for about ten minutes, but her strength gradually waned. To make matters worse, neighbors came by and started whispering about her shabby appearance. Mommy, look, that lady is outside in her slippers, a child said, pointing. Hey, don't do that. Don't point, a parent chided though even passing children mocked Michaela. For someone so full of pride, this public humiliation was hell. She crammed all her belongings into her car and fled the scene that day. Seeing this, I regained my composure and hastily turned to Kendrick. What should we do, Kendrick? I'm sorry, that was? It's okay, I know the situation. Besides, we should be the ones apologizing, Kendrick said gently. He suggested we go back to the living room where Mom had prepared tea and cake. I borrowed clothes from Kendrick and quickly changed to avoid catching a cold. After changing, we all sat down, trying to find some semblance of normalcy amidst the chaos. I sat on the living room sofa as Kendrick began explaining why he had been silent all this time. That woman was actually harassing mom in the same way, he said. What? I was shocked by this sudden revelation. Daniel and I looked at mom in surprise. It all happened when I wasn't around, mom continued. She constantly harassed and mocked me, even made fun of you. It was really terrible. Michaela had been badmouthing you every time we met, suggesting that your poor upbringing was due to my bad parenting. She claimed that if we had more money, Kendrick wouldn't have had to struggle. That's what I confessed to Kendrick yesterday. Kendrick nodded. Mom told me everything, and I decided that since you built the house, we should explain the situation to you and your family before deciding what to do next. That's what led to today. Michaela, who even tormented mom, could never be forgiven. Trembling with anger, I clenched my fists so tightly that my nails dug into my palms. Seeing this, Daniel gently placed his hand over mine. Harmony, I know how much you care about family. Maybe you don't have to endure this anymore, Daniel said softly. After hearing all this, I definitely can't go on with her either, I said, my resolve solidifying. 
Inspired by Kendrick's determination, I steeled myself to teach Michael a lesson. We pledged to act, and the next day, my phone was flooded with a storm of calls from Michael, Kendrick, Daniel, and I decided to meet her alone. What do you mean by kicking me out of the house? You won't get away with what you did. Michaela's shrill voice echoed as she entered my office, wearing the same clothes as yesterday, with dark circles under her eyes from lack of sleep. She looked miserable. Her loud voice was irritating, but I didn't let it show. Instead, I smiled sweetly, further infuriating her with my words. I cleaned up because you said the new house gets dirty, right? What? I don't want someone as ugly as you in the house. The new house will get dirty with germs, right? I said, putting my index finger to my lips, feigning cuteness. As unsuitable as it felt for me, it seemed to affect Michaela. Her face turned red as a boiled lobster, showing her anger. Who's ugly? I'm far more beautiful than a third-rate woman like you, she spat. To say that with the same clothes as yesterday and such a dirty face, impressive, I replied, my voice dripping with sarcasm. Whose fault do you think it is that I ended up like this? Michaela retorted, doubling down on her previous provocations. A woman like you, acting all high and mighty, I said, meeting her gaze steadily. The tension in the room was palpable and I knew there was no turning back now. I taunted Michaela, which angered her enough to lunge at me. Daniel quickly stood protectively in front of me, and Kendrick, usually mild-mannered, showed his anger for the first time. Enough. You're in no position to talk down to Harmony and her family, he said firmly. Why should I be the one getting scolded? The bad one is clearly that woman. Michaela remained defiant, even against Kendrick's words. She must have looked down on Kendrick as well. Deep down, she was after money, blaming me for losing it and despising me despite having her own earnings. Her greed was despicable. As I glared at her with utter contempt, Kendrick slammed a piece of paper in front of her. I have no intention of going on with someone who can't even value my family. We're getting a divorce. The paper Kendrick presented was a divorce petition, already signed by him and our father as a guarantor. Seeing this, Michaela suddenly regained her composure and clung to Kendrick in a panic. Wait, a divorce? Just wait. I don't want to hear what you have to say. My mind is made up, and if you refuse the divorce, I'll go to court if I have to. Where do you think the money for that will come from? You don't have the financial power, so don't talk big. I'll support you financially, so don't worry. Michaela tried to act humble, but Kendrick's words revealed her true nature again. Now that we have proof of her looking down on Kendrick financially, we could crush her without remorse. Smiling, I intervened between them. Didn't you know? Besides this store, I have several others. Michaela looked at me, confusion and desperation in her eyes. She was trying to comprehend what she had just heard, but I didn't give her a chance to respond. You thought you could manipulate Kendrick for his money? You thought wrong. Her face turned pale as the realization of her situation set in. The tables had turned, and she knew it. Kendrick, Daniel, and I stood united, and there was no way she could worm her way out of this. Kendrick gently but firmly pushed Michaela away from him. It's over, Michaela. Leave and don't come back. Defeated, Michaela had no choice but to leave. As she walked out, her once arrogant demeanor was replaced with a sense of utter defeat. We watched her go, feeling the sense of relief and closure. Turning back to Kendrick and Daniel, I felt a weight lift off my shoulders. Thank you, I said, my voice filled with gratitude. Kendrick smiled warmly. We're family, we protect each other. I have enough financial power to fight you, I said, causing Michaela to gasp in surprise. A TV show had previously featured one of my regular customers praising my shop. The reporter raved about its beauty and deliciousness, leading to its popularity. Requests for more stores came flooding in, and now I have a nationwide chain. Kendrick was the only one who supported the opening of my shop. As a thank you, I gifted him that house. I had also heard about your plans to open a clinic nearby and thought you'd need money. Michaela's face turned pale upon hearing the whole situation. She must have realized she'd picked a fight with the wrong person. She was speechless. Since I still hold the property rights, I am the owner of that house. I can sue you for trespassing. What will you do? Will you fight? With a smile, I cornered Michaela, who seemingly gave in and began to profusely apologize. Even though Michaela continued to apologize, our family had no intention of forgiving her and we kicked her out of the store. Kendrick and Michaelov eventually went to court for a divorce. Given everything that had happened, 
our lawyer assured us that the divorce would be granted. Our family savored this victory. During the time she was kicked out, Michaela's face became well known in the neighborhood, and no one was sympathetic towards her. Her clinic had no patients and closed within three months. She shamefully fled the town. Thus, our family found peace. I continued managing my shops and Kendrick finally opened his own. Kendrick, Dad, and Mom started living in the new house, which we remodeled for accessibility. Harmony, what happened? You suddenly went quiet, a neighbor asked, snapping me back to reality during a tea party. Sorry, it's nothing. I'm just really grateful to those kids, I responded. Thanks to them, I'm now enjoying a peaceful retirement with my husband. As we enjoyed the cake, I reflected on how these nearly 40 years were the stepping stones to my current happiness.